this video, I borrow a classic VW camper van for a 15 minute photo challenge. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today, well, I've got a VW camper van, and we're going to do a 15 minute photo challenge. Now, it's a classic. It's a 1979 VW camper van, bright orange. Yeah, there's got to be some good shots, but what do you do with something like this? Well, we're in a, a beautiful place. We're in the Ashdown Forest, and I reckon the first thing to do is a nice, simple panorama. So uh, I've got my Canon 24105 lens on, and on a Canon 60D, I can't, I can't get everything in, so I'm gonna have to back up a little bit. So from back here, I can get a, a pretty good view, nice wide view. This will be great for a panorama. Let's start by taking a picture of my hand, so I know the next sequence of pictures are all connected together as a panorama. And then in aperture priority mode, I'm gonna choose F8 as my aperture, because that'll do. It's uh, one of those ones where the aperture is less important. I'll take a meter reading and my meter is telling me, hmm, well, if we meter for a bit of sky as well, 250th of a second, F8. So I'll change to manual mode, dial those exact settings in, 250th of a second, F8, ISO 100, they're locked in, so every picture on my panorama has the same exposure. Okay, doesn't matter whether you start left or right, just take a picture, make sure they overlap, turn the camera, take the next shot, Turn the camera, take the next shot, and round we go. Trying to stay nice and level, making sure every picture overlaps the last. And we'll go nice and wide to really give this a nice feeling that it's in the landscape. Now, whilst I'm thinking of multiple images, let's do a sort of a joiner or a montage as well, because I think this will work really well as a montage. Technique is exactly the same as a panorama, as is the Photoshop bit, but we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. What I'm going to do is switch to aperture priority mode. I'll go for F8 again as my aperture and we'll take a nice general exposure for the scene. And if I just get the camper van in with less sky and the lighting's just changed, my exposure says 320th of a second F8. So again, manual exposure, lock those numbers in, 320th F8. I'm going to zoom in to about 70 millimeters, and I'll take all of the shots at the same zoom setting. So even the zoom is gonna stay constant this time round, okay? And I'm just gonna take lots of little bits of the, the, the camper van. So we're gonna take lots of shots that overlap. I'm gonna keep twisting the camera around as well. Make sure we get everything included, including the surrounding area. I think one of the great things about VW campers is the front looks so happy, doesn't it? It's a smiley face. Um, yeah, let's see if we can get a few detail shots of that because I just love this, this really strong orangey color that we've got here with the chrome. Um, yeah, that, that, I think a few close-ups could work well. So I'm gonna switch back to aperture priority mode. That's important. I'm gonna stay with F8 because that's a nice middle of the road depth of field and shouldn't get my shutter speed too low. Let's see, 1 60th of a second, I might just bump up my ISO to 200. Doubling my ISO doubles my shutter speed, gives me a sharper shot. Yeah, and I just love that simple graphic look, and sometimes it's the simple graphic images that work well. So let's come around to the side and find some more. So it seems like the, uh, the door handle. Uh, let's let's get a, grab a shot of that, because that's kind of nice, lovely, clean colours. One of the things I often forget is to take pictures both in landscape and portrait format. So let's do it in both. And then we can choose which we prefer later. More handles. I mean, I love these. Uh, I love these. Come on, it's 1979. They didn't build doors as the way we do now, but that works even with a bit of a slam. But we've got the two door handles here. Um, it's got to be a shot in there, a bit of symmetry. And symmetry is always good. We like a bit of symmetry. Okay, that's great. Okay, so 
almost out of time. Just time to dive inside and do a couple of uh, inside shots. So let's get this open. Actually, I tell you what, there's, there's a panorama here as well. There's a, yeah, hang on a second. Uh, <laughs> Cup of tea. There's a brilliant little panorama. I'm gonna to have to back up to do this. Okay, there, I reckon, maybe even, I can get just a little closer. It's gonna be one of those fiddly ones, but just here. One of the things about shooting a panorama is the way it bows and twists things. So let's set up a panorama to distort the shape of this. Aperture priority mode, F8, take a meter reading. ISO 200, because it's dark in there. Gives me 3 20th of a second. Manual exposure, 320 F8. Same settings. Away we go. Take a picture of my hand. And here we go. So, overlapping the shots. Starting there. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Brilliant. Okay. And that should stitch together and give this beautiful curve and distortion to the shape of this, which gives that sort of fisheye effect without a fisheye. Let's go inside. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of cozy in here, isn't it? But it's really rather nice. And this has um, been fitted out, so it's got new and old stuff in it as well. But uh, I've been driving this for a little bit. And one of the things that really caught my eye and I wanted to photograph is the fuel gauge. And uh, the fuel gauge, and grab the key, has got a, a lovely vintage retro feel to it. And it comes with about six keys for this. Remember these days when your cars had about six keys to do everything? Oh, goodness, oh, no, not that key. Not that key. 15 minutes, just fun around the right key. There you go, that key. And the fuel gauge has got a little kind of pointy finger, which is just fantastic. So it's gonna take 15 minutes for the fuel gauge to get up and go. Oh, right. And also trying to get in here without reflections is gonna be a challenge too. So I need to find an angle. Reflections everywhere. I might have to be on the other seat to do this. Love that little vintage fuel gauge. Well, there we go. 15 minutes has come and gone. Now, if you want to find out more about general photography, hints and tips, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Centre. But what I've got to do is I've got to get this camper van back to its owners. However, for the purposes of video, we're going to edit my favourite picture in Photoshop right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. That VW camper van was a real experience. Driving experience, hmm, a little bit challenging. Photography wise, no problems at all. Some really great photos. Now, I'm going to make the joiner image and I'm going to do it in Photoshop because it's really straightforward to do. So first things first, I went through the pictures and I picked out my uh, joiner images. I'll click on the first one, I hold shift, click on the last one, and I can drag them from Explorer and drop them all into Photoshop. Now because these are raw files, of course they open up in Adobe Camera Raw. I'll press the select all button and then I'm gonna press the auto button. Now that will analyze each and every picture and give it all a slight variation based on, well, getting it automatically correct. Now you'll notice that's happened because each of these boxes is blank. And if I just go through the individual images one at a time, you'll see that the exposure and all of the sliders just randomly change from picture to picture. Okay, let's click select all and then we'll click on open images. Now, why would I want that? Especially considering I went all the trouble of getting the exposure right at the photography stage. Well, if it turned out I actually wanted the exposure right to make a, a seamless montage, it's much easier to do that in camera and much harder to do it for 14 images in Photoshop. Photoshop can randomize the exposure slightly and it can do that really quickly. So that's what I let Photoshop do because that's what it does best. Okay, so there we are. That's all of the images open inside of Photoshop. So to join them together, I'm gonna go to file and then I'm gonna choose automate and photo merge, which is just dropped off the bottom of the video, but trust me, it's there. In photo merge, I will choose the collage layout and most importantly, untick blend images together. 
open the files that are already open, that's the, the pictures that make my joiner, and then click OK. And off it goes. So it'll gather those together, look for the overlaps and joins, no matter how small, and then try and line everything up. Now, because some of the overlaps and joins are really small, it's actually gonna fail to line things up absolutely perfectly, but that's all part of the joiner experience. There we go, so there we are, there is my, my joiner, and you can see they are all slightly different random positions. Now, of course, you can go through each and every layer and randomize it even more if you want to, that works fine, or you can simply say, yep, that's okay, and what I'm gonna do is go to layer, layer style, and we'll add in a stroke for a border on each layer. I'll change the color for my border to be, well, white, but not quite white. So let's have the hue as zero, saturation as zero, but the brightness at 96. So it's just off white. Then I'll change the size. So it's about 30 pixels. Depends on the, the size of your images. You might need to go bigger or smaller. Position is on the outside, and then we'll jump down to drop shadow. I like drop shadow. The reason I like drop shadow is because you can position it just by clicking on the image and dragging the shadow around, which is a really handy feature when you know it's there. So we want the, the shadow to go down there in the bottom right corner. I'll just increase the size just to blur it out and drop the opacity back slightly. Then I can click the OK button and that will apply my layer style. Now I've done that to one image, but now I need to do it to lots of images. There's a really neat shortcut. Come to the word effects on the layer, right click it, and choose copy layer style. Then go down to the very bottom of the layer panel, find the bottom layer, hold the shift key and click it. Now they've all become selected, and all I need to do is right click on any of them, it doesn't matter which one, and actually click on the, not the, the layer itself, but the, the wording next to it, and we can find paste layer style. And it pastes them on, there you go. So there is my joiner. Uh, we could jiggle these around a little bit by selecting an individual layer, getting the move tool and just moving them about. Or you can also use a bit of free transform just to, to spin them around. And that can be useful just to really mix things up a little bit. And it doesn't take long to do that and create your, your joiner, your montage, and just give it a slight randomness, which these things really lend themselves to. There you go. So when you're happy, all you need to do then is just to add in a brand new background and that is your joiner picture completed. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see other videos by the am other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do? You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.